Okay, now let's go through a problem dealing with an ideal ranking cycle. So, what we have? Simple ideal ranking cycle with water. Like, well, of course it's water. We can technically do this with um, other fluids as well. Like, it's all fine. Um, like, refrigerant could technically do this as well. Okay, operates between the pressure limits. Okay, pressure limits, that's mean the upper and lower bounds of 4 megapascals in the boiler and 25 kilopascals in the condenser. And we have a turbine inlet temperature of 700 degrees Celsius. The boiler is sized to provide a steam flow of 50 kilograms per second. And we want to find the power, okay, power produced by the turbine and, okay, consumed by the pump. Okay, pump and turbine. So we're going to know the enthalpy before and after the pump and the enthalpy before and after the turbine to be able to do that. So first off, let's draw the process. So for all ranking cycles, you're going to have a lower line, that's the lower pressure, and an upper line, which is the higher pressure. That upper line is a constant pressure line on the TS diagram, and it always has that shape. So you, know, you don't have to have a perfect diagram, but having something that looks nice here works well. If you wonder why there's an A, it's just because I took the picture from the solution, and so A is a random number that can be changed. So let's go through this. Like I said, we're going to need to know this point, this point, and this point and this point, which is all of them. It's just it's just all of them. We're finding all the points here, all the enthalpies, and we can solve it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get all the properties we can from appendix A5. Like, for example, I know the turbine inlet temperature right here. That temperature is 700 degrees Celsius. I also know the pressure, and I know it's superheated, which means I can go straight to the appendices for that. Of course, I picked the wrong one because I'm a doofus. We're doing this one right now. So, I know it's a saturated liquid, which means its quality is equal to zero, and I also know its pressure, which pressure is equal to 25 kilopascals. Okay, I should have started with one rather than three. I get it, I get it. So when I do that, I can go there, I realize that my enthalpy is going to be the enthalpy of a saturated liquid, and I can just write that down. I'm also getting the specific volume. If you're wondering why I'm getting specific volume, it's because the work of the pump is, you know, way, way back in chapter four, boundary work is equal to my specific volume times my change in pressure, okay? That's the boundary work, that's the pump the work that the pump is doing. You're gonna see that quite often when we deal with pumps in this chapter. So let's get the work of the pump. So there it is, my specific volume, which I calculated, knowing what a saturated liquid is. If you're wondering, does it change? Does the specific volume change when you go from one to two? The answer is negligibly. Like technically it does change slightly, but it's so slight that it's just not worth it. Like it's it's insignificant. This is already a very small amount. Like the work of the pump in is only four kilojoules per kilogram. As a note, our enthalpy before that point was 272. So this is doing hardly anything to our fluid. It's really not changing the enthalpy all that much. Okay, so that's two points done. Now we're gonna go back to figure out point three. Ah, I'm an idiot. So, enthalpy of point two is going to be equal to the enthalpy of point one plus my work in. So, 272 plus four is 276. I know that's not exact there, but I am going to let it round because compared to the other simplifications we've made, it's not that important. Okay. Now, we would finished quite a bit of this. I'm going to go ahead and try to redraw that diagram for you over here. There we go. It looks good. Up to there, across, up, down, over. Okay, so we got point two, we got point one, now we need point three and point four. Now you can go find figure A9 and just have an absolutely horrible day trying to find out what the superheated vapor is going to be. But that's terrifying, right? That's just terrifying. We don't want to do that. No. Now you can. You can find the pressure. You can find the temperature, you can figure out your enthalpy line, you can figure out entropy, and you can drag it over. So it is possible, like you can use diagrams like this to find out everything you need. So enthalpy is right around 3900, and entropy, if you drag it straight down there, will be about 7.6. So, but wouldn't it be nice if there was an easier way to do that? Like, you know, why in the world? Who would want to do this to themselves? Why does your textbook even include this? 
I have no idea why it includes this. Because we have tables, okay? We have tables. I just need to traumatize everybody a little bit every semester. And so I'm doing it to you too. Okay. So you can go to the tables. Table A6 is the superheated table. So table A6. And all you're going to use is you're going to use your pressure and your temperature to find the value. So your pressure is 4 megapascals. Your temperature is 700 degrees Celsius. And with both of those things, you would get these two values straight from it. And if you had a temperature that was not on that table, you would have to interpolate. But in this case, it's a nice round number, so it'll be there for you. Okay. Last thing we have to go to is we have to go down to that first point 0.4. So we've done most of this right now. Now we have to figure out this point 0.4. And if I'm zooming in on it, point 0.4 is somewhere inside of that saturated mixture area. And so I'm going to have to figure out its quality if I'm going to figure out what its enthalpy is. So what we know is our entropy is going to be the same because we have an isotropic turbine. If it wasn't isentropic, well, we would pretend it was for a little bit and then we would correct. And so I can use this to calculate the quality. So at 25 kilopascals, I look in the tables, I find the entropy of a saturated liquid, I find the entropy um, change between a saturated liquid and saturated vapor. And that gives me the quality. And it's a very high quality to what we expect. It should be somewhere close-ish to one. I mean, you have some problems where it might be like 85%, but it, it should, really shouldn't go lower than that. And then using that, I can then calculate the enthalpy. So I go to that same table, that same line, I'd find the enthalpy of a saturated liquid and the enthalpy change between a saturated liquid and saturated vapor. And I can calculate my enthalpy at 0.4. So, with that, I have my last enthalpy. So finally, I've got almost everything here. I had the work of the pump, I calculated that earlier. Now I can find out how much um, energy my turbine is extracting. So this is the amount of energy per kilogram of fuel, or sorry, per kilogram of vapor that my turbine is extracting. It's the difference between those two values. And if we want to get the actual power output, I have to multiply that by my mass flow, which was given in the problem statement. So I get my turbine's work output is 67,972 kilowatts. And if I go back to do the pump, it's 203 kilowatts, which you can see is really insignificant compared to the amount of power that we are generating. So that is it for this time. Um, next time I'm going to go back to superior tables just to show you some of the information I found there and just make sure that you understand exactly where I'm getting the values from. So I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.